Welcome to the Metaville. I'm Joy Toodle, the Operations Director at Rocketship Consultants. I'm excited to be your ambassador to the Metaverse today. And I'm Nathan Moon, the Content Director at Rocketship Consultants. Uh, while Joy is running the show from Gainesville, Florida, I'm joining you from uh, San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. And our guest today, Evelyn Mora, who is the founder and CEO of Digital Village, is joining us from Paris, France. So, Evelyn, welcome to the Meadowville. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, welcome, Evelyn. Um, we understand that you're an award-winning strategist and an inventor doing some really cool things in art, fashion, and technology. Before we delve into what you are currently doing in the metaverse, can you tell us a little bit about your background and about your experience? We love to hear from our guests about the road that they traveled to get to the point that they are today professionally. Sure. So my background is uh, heavily focused on sustainability. Um, I worked as a consultant and strategist for public and private sectors, uh, mainly about um, sustainability, again, communications, um, business and uh, brand and uh, product development. Um, and I'm also the founder of Helsinki Fashion Week. And, um, and yes, yeah, so I would say fashion, sustainability, tech, um, and art and, yeah, innovation, I guess. Well, and innovation is key. So how did you then get involved with these this, this background into where we're going with the metaverse or Web 3.0? So my career and honestly, every career move I make, um, um, it's really, sorry, reminders. Um, yeah, it's been a big month. We just closed our funding round. Um, so it's always all around. Um, sorry, let me just put this reminder off. Yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, um, I'm all about tackling challenges and problems around sustainability. So thinking interdisciplinary and outside of the box. So if there is um, a certain challenge in a step of the supply chain, for example, I like to approach it in a, from a very sort of interdisciplinary approach. I like to look into other industries and see if there is um, a different kind of perspective that can be used to approach this particular challenge. Um, so tech, that's how I got into tech, uh, ultimately, by trying to, you know, make Helsinki Fashion Week more sustainable. Uh, really, um, I realized how much time I'm spending online and how um, unoptimized uh, in several different ways um, online spaces were. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess it's just a natural thing to me. And I'm, I guess I'm lucky because every time I kind of move to a certain direction, it becomes like a mainstream thing like the metaverse but um i guess it's not intentional or maybe it is i don't know maybe it's a subconscious thing um but yeah I, it's it keeps happening to me i also work with trend forecasters a lot because uh i guess it's also all about like um understanding the market studying the history um science tech you know and sort of anticipating where everything is going and they're just kind of uh, changing with times, which is something very natural to me. No, that's that's really interesting. And I guess with the fashion, it's you're always looking at the next thing. And so technology, that's kind of a natural fit for those to go hand in hand. Um, a year ago, you created the first ever 3D Fashion Week, and it reached half a million live viewers from 54 countries. And by all accounts, that has changed the future of fashion. Can you tell us a little bit more about 3D Fashion Week, why it was so special, and why there hasn't been anything like it since? Um, absolutely. So um, ultimately, like I said, um, we wanted to use tech tools to make Helsinki Fashion Week more sustainable. So we started eliminating the showroom uh, of Helsinki Fashion Week um, because, you know, it's full of racks and clothes and um, it's meant meant for for buyers to meet designers and and you know feel the clothes and whatnot. But because we have kept Helsinki Fashion Week fairly small, um, really featuring about thirty designers a season, there is no need for such place. So we decided to um, sort of use three D design and have this interactive three D room. 
So one thing led to another and, and I decided to go completely 3D with the entire event. So I had to, of course, do this. It's like moving a huge ship um, to another direction. So I had to literally, you know, conv convince the board, convince all the partners, um, potentially sort of like um, inform some of the partners, like hotel partners that we won't be. Uh, and because of COVID, of course, you know, you didn't, you weren't able to have um, any uh, physical events. So I had to, had to, you know, let those partners go, which was a really sad experience because we had some really great partners and venues that we had organized, like um, um, really just super amazing uh, spaces. Anyway, I'm not going to go deeper into that. But then we had all these models that we had hired for the show from all around the world that were super enthusiastic to to come to Helsinki Fashion Week. And um, so I didn't want to just like let them go. And just I really wanted to find strategies and ways to involve them in. So eventually we ended up 3D scanning those models and using them as models in the 3D Fashion Week. So we wanted to do this shift also in a sustainable way because often you know we talk about sustainability and we plant few trees and then we call ourselves sustainable and it's just not that so to me every process every impact uh, from a really wide perspective it's really important to understand uh the the impact or results of your choices so I'm going really deep right now, you guys. Like I, I, I've lost my way. What was the question? No, I'm kidding. But um, really, so we decided to. Um, I had to convince all the designers, traditional designers, that okay, you guys, let's create you um, a digital collection, completely digital show. And I was pretty convinced that these guys are are the the tough cookies. They're gonna be like you know creative. They're gonna be like I don't know what you're talking about. I've never done this before. I'm not gonna do it. So I was really prepared to just like go 3D. I had decided that we're gonna do that. Um, so whoever comes on board, good. And whoever doesn't, we, we are going to like bring in more designers that are in the line. Um, I called them personally, everybody was in. They, most of them just said that Evelyn, we, we have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I know that you've been having a monologue for for 30 minutes, but we trust you and, and we're in. So um, really like, I just saw it as an opportunity to, for these smaller sustainable brands who don't have the funds to necessarily like rent huge places like the Louvre or the Vatican city to really use the cyber space and, you know, virtual spaces to create the brand narratives and give that story that the collection carries. Um, and then of course, um, wasn't so much into NFTs, but very into games. So I always had this vision in my head that these clothes are made for games. So games are going to use these clothes. So this is where we're gonna go with this. Um, so voila, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I think you really hit on something about this space is that we're all at the very early point and we're figuring it out as we go along. So um, with your uh, well-known advocacy around uh, sustainability, tell us how you're using sustainability practices um, as we go more into the metaverse and this Web 3.0 space. Yeah, so after um, we created all these shows, um, we got huge view, like uh, viewers, we got great media, earned media value. And I decided that, okay, uh, we, I want to turn this into a, but like, actually I noticed a lot of issues, right? So, uh, we worked with a company that, um, our tech partner, if you will, um, and they wanted us to price, uh, these assets like for five bucks. And I would be like, there is no way I'm going to do that. First of all, this is like $600 just to produce this one look. And that's really, really affordable. You want me to sell that for $5? There is no way. And they were like, no one's going to pay you $600. And look at that now. And it feels <laughs> like a million, million dollars. But um, really, like, it was super, the most, the first challenges that I faced um, were around pricing and giving value to that particular digital asset. So, and then creating a supply chain for that particular digital asset. 
um, creating a supply chain and a system for digital assets that is actually uh, adaptable by the uh, real fashion industry. Um, I feel like there is literally like maybe, I, I really don't know anybody, maybe one person, I want to say Richard Hobbs, um, that is that knows about fashion supply chain in real life mm. and understands that when you use these digital tools, what kind of impact it creates, how it can be used to tackle, um, you know, challenges around sustainability, uh, really sort of minimizing your uh, CO2 emissions, or how can it impact negatively, right? So it's not that black and white to just, you know, use 3D to, you know, save mm -hmm. waste in your sampling project process. You know, it's really not that simple. Um, sure, that's one of the many things, but it's really sort of a very dry way of looking at the potential of right. tech in improving the fashion supply chain. So that's one thing, like how does internet and the time that we spend online impact our mindset, our health, um, our lifestyles really, um, you know, how we date, how we shop and how we really work, interact with our friends and family, you know, our lifestyles have really changed. So we need to think about the connection between digital and physical. And also, um, you know, I could go on and on with um, you, like ethical use of data, privacy issues, IP issues. You know, we couldn't get two designers to collaborate with each other properly because there was no proper like IP uh, protection set up, if you will. So there is a lot of things from um, energy consumption to social sustainability aspects to you know, even pedophilia and gambling, like it's like really complex issue to look at. And if, um, I mean, then there are things like blockchain compatibility elements or software compatibility elements. Like I I learned a lot in that two months that we produced uh, the 3D Fashion Week. Um, and there, there were like no points of reference either because there was nothing like it before. And I guess it's actually pretty challenging because there hasn't been one, like you said before, because um, it is challenging. We had 200 people, um, 30 traditional, 30 3D designers work together for the first time ever, which was my favorite part to see how they collaborated, which I think is like super interesting because you have these creatives that work traditionally and creatives that work only with digital tools, which are actually underestimated as artists, which is crazy. I think, uh, you know, it's not about the tool, but the outcome or the process or the message. But um, yeah, I think ultimately things that we face, the problems of supply chain, um, giving value to supply chain, uh, sorry, to the digital asset and just um, NFTs and all this virtual economy and lifestyle. You know, there is so much questions around sustainability that people just ignored and went to NFT hype, hype. you know, just, you know, we have this kind of drop and we sell it and uh, we sold out in three seconds, but then there was no utility for NFTs. You know, that's another huge issue, utility. Blockchain was an issue, like people don't get right. blockchain. They right. don't understand it. I mean, there's ultimately two main purposes why um, people use blockchain. And as a consultant, I know that the first thing is um, obviously governance of the supply chain, trying to make things faster and cheaper, right? And if you have uh, interest in sustainability, you might want to also use that tool to become, make your supply chain more sustainable. But then there is the second aspect to communicate those sustainability steps or different steps of your supply chain to the end consumer. But unfortunately, end consumer doesn't really read blockchain or, you know, <clears throat> doesn't understand that technical literacy. So, um, ultimately, companies end up producing 2D images saying that, so this is what we do, do, and this is what we did, and this is what we did. But again, the consumer should just blindly trust it with no proof, mm -hmm. just with the promise that it is on blockchain. So it is true. Right. We're not lying to you. But with today's climate of distrust from consumers, there there is really a way to use blockchain without having to sort of... Um, you know, not understand it. So I, I'm not explaining in the best way, but I invented this village protocol social blockchain interface that actually just uses design thinking in translating the data on blockchain in a particular gamified way where the user actually can see what's happening on blockchain without having to have this 
2D tag um, and just blindly trust things. So um, it also, you know, helps the community to collaborate and it's really meant to um, bring transparency in IP rights and just exchanging assets and just, you know, really sort of um, make it functional, you know, long term. So I've been completely resigning from this NFT hype and building those products and, and fundraising. That's a lot to unpack. <laughs> so, because there's so much going on in this space. So, um, let's continue our discussion after a quick break and also learn how our audience can contact you. Welcome back. Our guest today is Evelyn Mora. She's founder and CEO of Digital Village. And you can find out more about Digital Village by going to their website. And it's going to scroll down here at the bottom, digitalvillage.io. Evelyn, because we see ourselves as ambassadors to the metaverse, we love to seek advice from our experts that we interview. In your opinion, what are some of the fundamental elements that we should keep in mind as users entering the metaverse? Um, I would say um, pay attention to how you feel after you've spent time in that particular platform um, and think about how that particular experience brings value to your work or to your life in general. Um, just being mindful and aware of uh, what you give and what you get in these platforms. And I think that um, there is so many different metaverses that are being built right now that many of them actually bring value to people's life. You know, they're fun. They enable you to uh, create meetings in a really nice way. And it's more entertaining, interactive. And, you know, you get to participate in virtual economy and whatnot. It's built in a sustainable way. You have access to certain tools. But then others are just there to just, you know, uh, use you to make more money. So, um it's really just that black and white. So I would say to um, be mindful and aware of, of where you, where you, which platforms you want to participate on, um, because it's actually very addictive. It's another problem, actually. Um, and that's the case also with Digital Village. I, I spent five hours there and it feels like 20 minutes and I'm like, oh, my God, guys, we have a problem. This is so addictive. So it's definitely, you know, it's not that we are just tackling these issues in Digital Village, but we do face the same issues. Just we just take the time to try to test and see what works and what doesn't. Well, and speaking of Digital Village, so it has become the home of digital fashion. And can you tell us, is it really solely fashion focused? And also, what kind of companies are you currently working with? And how can other companies get involved with you? Um, yeah, so um, obviously with my background and the team that we have, fashion was a super like low hanging fruit for us uh, with our understanding the, of the industry and um, the potential of digital fashion as an add on to, to physical products and services. Um, we work with uh, fashion, but also art institutions. Um, we work with um, the music industry. Um, we work with architect companies, um, we work with gaming companies. So it's very interdisciplinary, actually. Um, and how companies can get in touch with us or participate, they can um, email us or they can create their profiles on um, digitalvillage.io. And um, yeah, it's really actually simple to onboard clients. Um, our team will help and send necessary information to to explore the opportunities for that particular brand because I always say that one size doesn't fit all in digital space because our services and products and supply chains are different. So we need to find the best way to leverage from these spaces and tools. Um, and that's what we do. You've provided some excellent advice and I know that we're going to have audience members that want to find out more. Um, how best do you think they could get in touch with you or connect with you after the show? Um, so I'm really active on our Discord. So you can join our Discord channel on Digital Village. Otherwise, um, 
LinkedIn, of course. Um, yeah, I prefer Discord actually the most because I have so, so many emails that I, I, I get to them after a month or two. So so I would say Discord is the best. It's fast and quick place to communicate and also meet other team members and, and community members. Well, thank you for joining us today, Evelyn. We look forward to seeing how you impact the metaverse and the world in the years to come. And thank you to our audience for watching. Our show discusses all topics related to the metaverse. Um, to suggest or become a sponsor, reach out to us and don't forget to like and subscribe to our show. And of course, share it on your social media channels. Signing off from the Metaville, I'm Joy. And I'm Nathan. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks, Evelyn. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.